Good evening, everybody. Sorry if I'm a bit late tonight. Uh, if you're watching this live in my Facebook group, here we are, the last Tuesday in April. So thanks for watching. If you're watching this live, thank you for watching. If you're watching it in my YouTube channel or as a podcast on my website. And April is um, IBS Awareness Month. I spoke about IBS and bloating last week. And this week I wanted to turn my attention uh, to a common problem um, that I find with talking to people, especially amongst my clients, is that it comes a point when suddenly foods that you've been eating throughout your life have not caused you any problems at all, start to cause you problems and starts to create IBS type symptoms. And it can become really, really frustrating. And for some people, what can happen is they start to notice certain things are causing uh, a problem and causing symptoms that become more and more uncomfortable. They start to take these foods out of the diet and it can sometimes become a bit of a slippery slope because what may start with a temporary relief from symptoms can suddenly start to extend into other foods, other food groups, um, and it becomes a bit of a downward spiral and people don't know where to go, don't know how to resolve it, um, and seem to find that there is little help other than to suddenly start to give up certain foods. And for some people, it can start to become quite a long list of foods and it makes life very, very restrictive uh, for individuals, particularly eating out or takes the enjoyment out of life when you can't eat the foods that you used to enjoy. So um, I just wanted to start with talking about the difference between an intolerance or sensitivity, as it's often called today, and an allergy. Um, the two often get over, overlapped with each other, but they are very, very different. Now, an allergy is when your body creates an allergic reaction, which means the body produces antibodies known as IgE antibodies and tends to be an instant reaction. It can be... Um, a more subtle allergy, less serious allergy, I should say, in terms of it might be a rash, might be create a headache, it might cause brain fog. Um, but at the more extreme end of the scale, we know that certain allergic reactions are very dangerous because it can prevent people from breathing and create an anaphylactic shock. So those are very severe allergies. Now, an intolerance or sensitivity, as it's often called, is very different. What happens then is the body experiences a reaction, but it can be very delayed. It can happen several hours later. You may not really notice something maybe till the next day. Um, and that could be something like a rash on the body. Um, it could be a headache, as I said, um, brain fog, but it's not the same thing as... Um, Sorry, there is an overlap there, as I just said, it could be those things, um, but very often it's digestive symptoms that are occurring when it is an intolerant reaction. So this is when people may start to get some bloating and discomfort. Uh, there may be a change in the bowel movements that start to go from normal to either very sudden and loose or go the other way where things become very, very sluggish in the system. Um, but it can create, um, it can cause the things like rashes and things like that, but it's very subtle and doesn't happen straight away. You know, if it was more of an allergic reaction, you tend to get this rash and redness that can occur straight after, eat, after eating, say, shellfish, for example, whereas um, this could be more subtle and builds up over time um, and takes longer, but it's more of an intolerance rather than this, this allergic reaction to something. Um, now, it may seem odd that you've been eating foods and the same sort of foods and nothing has particularly changed and suddenly you think you're beginning to get a reaction. And sometimes we start to ignore things initially because we think it comes and goes and it doesn't happen all the time and it's quite subtle. But then we start to notice that mm, every time I seem to eat bread or have pasta, or eat cheese, I'm getting symptoms like cramping and bloating or diarrhea, um, just this general discomfort that you never used to get. Um, and it starts to creep up, creep up on us until we notice that it's very definitely is linked to certain foods. Now the common foods, there are very common foods that won't be any surprise to you because I'm sure you've heard of them, but it is the wheat and all the gluten, 
I mean, gluten is in wheat, but gluten is also in rye and barley. So gluten is the protein. Um, and there's a lot of this gluten grain in modern breads that we buy, uh, modern sort of processed sliced bread, but bread that we buy is a lot of gluten in it. Um, ancient grains like the spelts don't have as much and they may be better tolerated, but they do have a lot of gluten. Or it might just be the wheat. We tend to have an overload of wheat in the diet, which may or may not be caught due to the gluten creating the problem. It could be more to do with the grain and the wheat itself. We know that dairy is problematic for people um, and eggs, which is more often to do with the egg whites that can be the problem for some people causing these symptoms. And then we can get into another whole raft of foods like the histamine rich foods, which are fermented foods and vinegars, yogurts, uh, shellfish, um, processed meats like bacon and sausages. So they create more of a histamine response in the body that can also create these IBS type symptoms and you may suddenly notice that these foods cause a problem for you. Um, it could be nightshade families. This is the uh, which contain um, something called solanine that we start to react to. So potatoes and aubergine, tomatoes, peppers, cayenne pepper, those things that are in the uh, nightshade family may start to cause a problem for you. Um, but what happens is if we start eliminating these foods, we may get temporary relief. And then for some people, some symptoms start to come back and then we have to eliminate other foods. What happens with this is you're never really getting to the root cause of the problem. And that's where I work. I'm always about getting to the root cause of the problem. What is going on in the body as to create this intolerance that you never had before? And that's where it's really important to try and get to is why why have I got an intolerance that I never had? Why can I no longer eat these foods? And I tend to classify these in just to a few key areas. And when we start to think about these key areas, um, very often if we support these areas and look at ways to manage these areas, we may be able to overcome it. The first one is poor digestive capability. If you're if the body is struggling to to secrete sufficient digestive secretions, whether it's the digestive enzymes, whether it's the hydrochloric acid, whether it's the bile from the gallbladder needed to help digest fats. If we don't um, have enough digestive secretions of all the different digestive secretions, because they all work to break down different um, nutrients, whether it's proteins, fats, carbohydrates, uh, cellulose, tough cell walls, whether it's the lactose, milk sugar that needs lactase to break it down. If we don't have all these different types of digestive enzymes and other digestive secretions that are needed, then the body can start to struggle. So first and foremost, that's the area I start to look at first of all, and can we support the body to do just that? The second thing is, are you really over consuming certain food groups? Because it's very often the wheat and the dairy in particular that we tend to eat huge amounts of in our day to day life. So that's the second area I think may start to create the problem that the body gets overloaded with these foods and just starts to uh, react against them. There's just too much in the diet. And the third area to think about is the, the gut microbiome and dysbiosis, um, because we may be missing certain really important key commensal beneficial strains of bacteria and missing uh, and have an introduction of more pathogenic strains of bacteria. And this can then start to cause different problems in each of these areas. So in terms of self-care solutions and where do you start with this? Well, number one on my list, which you'll have heard me talk about before, I spoke about it last week, uh, I talk about it a lot, is to really start to think about, are you relaxed when you start to eat, eating any one of your main meals of the day, and in, including snacks, if you're going to eat snacks, but particularly your larger main meals of the day, just how relaxed are you? 
Are you stopping to pause and eat? Are you eating on the go? Are you rushing around? Do you stop and think about how much you're chewing your food? Are you as relaxed as you possibly can be when you start to eat? Or have you got loads of things going round and round in your mind so that you're not focused on eating your meal? You're distracted by other things. You're watching TV. Um, you've got small children that you're trying to get them to eat their food and sit at the table, which I know is tricky in itself. Um, we do absolutely need to think about the focus on all these things, slowing down, taking a deep breath before eating. The digestive process kicks in before we take the first mouthful of food. So we need to be at a table and slowing down and pausing and taking a deep breath and smelling our food and looking at our food and appreciating it before we take that first mouthful. And then to eat slower, that doesn't mean you need to take half an hour to eat a meal, but most people are rushing through their meals, not chewing their food properly, forgetting that the chewing action and the secretion of saliva in the mouth also contains a digestive enzyme um, and that in itself triggers the follow-on process through the whole digestive um, parts of the body whether it's through the stomach and the small intestines where more and more digestive secretions are released so we must must stop and think about that first stage the second thing to think about is um, eating bitter foods. Now, bitter foods are going to encourage digestive secretions in the stomach, and that's where food first goes to when we swallow. It goes there very quickly. Um, we, we will eat food, it's there within seconds, and it's gonna sit there for hours potentially, one to three hours, depending on the volume and the type of food eaten. And it's there that food is churned up in gastric acid, very acidic environment, and bitter foods will help to encourage the secretion of, um, diger of gastric acid and uh, protease enzymes in the stomach that help to break down protein foods and churn everything up ready for the next phase of digestion in the small intestines. So bitter foods that you can eat are things like rocket, uh, watercress, radish, uh, broccoli, kale. These are all very, very good bitters. You can buy bitters um, as a supplement that you may find helpful. Um, that you may want to try that may help this whole process and help to take away some of the symptoms that you're experiencing. So do think about bitter foods. And I know for some of you, you may read that list and think that they're the very foods I struggle to consume sometimes. But um, if you can eat those, then try and think about having a, a small amount of those at the start of a meal. So you could potentially start a meal with a little salad with, say, rocket and watercress in. You could add a little bit of lemon juice to that. I'll explain why lemon juice next is really helpful. And just chew that really slowly and eat that first of all. And that will really help to get your digestive secretion stimulated, um, which could be very, very helpful. Other cultures would do this. Um, the next thing to think about is having some lemon juice and water at the start of a main meal, a couple of teaspoons of each. The lemon juice is highly acidic. This creates a bit of acidity gently in the stomach that will help the whole digestive process there. Um, that alone may be helpful. Sometimes people need something much stronger than that. But as a self-care solution, you could find that really helpful. The next thing to think about is this overconsumption or particularly things like wheat and dairy. So do keep a food diary and you may be very, very surprised to see what crops up when you do that. My clients that keep a three day food diary, sometimes longer, will really highlight the foods. And it certainly highlights to me how frequently things are cropping up in the diet. Because if you start your day with toast and you have a sandwich for lunch, and you have pasta for dinner, you are eating wheat throughout the day. Um, often people are eating cheese and yogurts frequently in their diet, um, having milk, and that's a lot of dairy. And it might just be an overconsumption that if in, you had them in much smaller quantities, your body would be able to cope with those. 
So keep a food diary over about a week and reflect on it. And I think by keeping the food diary, it will make you focus your mind on just what you're eating with those types of food and have a look how frequently things are cropping up and do be aware of sources. And when you're buying foods, do read the ingredients. Of course, I'd much rather you were cooking your meals, but if you are going to buy a ready meal or you're buying sauces, look very closely at the ingredients label and look at how often dairy and wheat are cropping up and gluten's cropping up in those labels in the foods that you're eating. When you do do that, then hopefully you can find ways to start to reduce the consumption of those that may take the pressure off the digestive system so that you can cope much better. And then the final thing to think about is having a good quality probiotic. Um, if there is a dysbiotic picture going on where you are lacking certain really important strains of bacteria, taking the probiotic could be helpful, uh, particularly in the short term, it could help to alleviate symptoms. And one of the reasons for this is particularly when we think about dairy and if you are struggling to digest the milk sugar called lactose, where we need an enzyme called lactase to break down the lactose, the milk sugar, um, certain beneficial bacteria are known as lactic acid bacteria. And if you are struggling to digest these foods, the dige uh, the, um, these bacteria in your gut can help to pick up the problem further down the chain and help to prevent things like bloating and cramping. But again, is if you eat too much of it, even then the bacteria may struggle to cope. So using probiotics could be a good solution for you to help with that, may go some way towards correcting that imbalance. But over and above all those things, it's uh, it, I would really recommend working with a specialist earlier on, don't leave things too late. Um, brilliant if you identify gluten as your problem, you give up gluten and it solves all your problems. But do bear in mind, if you do that, you are uh, potentially making life more difficult when you're eating out, going on holiday, eating on a plane, um, eating birthday cake, whatever it might be. It may be that rather than having to give up gluten completely, you might need some digestive support. But also don't get to the situation, please, where you're having to give up so many foods that you're eating a really narrow range of foods because it can be very difficult to get from that to start to go back out. I have clients that come to me that are in a very, very restrictive um, food intake. It takes a really long period of time and it takes trust in me and trust in your body's ability to start to reintroduce foods. And it, it is a very slow process. So don't let things get to that stage. So thank you for watching tonight. I uh, hope you found that interesting. As always, do drop me a message, caroline at patentprinciples.com. Um, if you want to email me, uh, drop messages if you're watching this in the Facebook group. If you found that interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Peyton Principles Natural Health, so you get alerts when new, new videos get released. Um, and uh, message below if there's any topics you'd like me to talk about going forward. Very happy to consider those to make sure that I'm offering things that are going to be really relevant to you. So thank you for watching. Have a lovely evening and a lovely week ahead. And if you're watching this live or in the next few days, have a fantastic bank holiday, the first of many in May. Enjoy that longer weekend if you manage to get those that time off. Take care, everyone. Bye.